In this video, we will discuss the MNC SP2006 Dilution Probe. We will cover the basic operation, major components, and the most common maintenance event, replacing the probe filter and rebuilding the dilution and adductor blocks. All demonstrations will be performed on an unheated, out-of-service probe. Please review and follow all safety recommendations outlined in the operator's manual for this equipment. The SP2006 dilution unit is based on an ultrasonic flow through a critical orifice. See figure 1 in the user manual for a full explanation of the dilution principle with associated drawings. One of the most important features of the SP2006 is the position of the dilution block. The dilution and adductor blocks, including the critical orifice, are mounted directly to the probe body and therefore heated up with the probe. The modular design of the SP2006 allows for configurations to support many process and ambient conditions. The major components we will cover in this video are the probe assembly, the filter element, the dilution and adductor blocks. Now that you are familiar with the layout and design of the SP2006, Let's begin with some maintenance. First, the filter and O-ring change out. Before beginning maintenance on the probe, remove the system from service and shut off the dilution air to the probe. Open the protective fiberglass clamshell by releasing the latches on the bottom. Loosen the strap bolt or T-handle on the filter lid assembly and rotate the strap out of the way. Gently pull on the filter pressing screw and remove the filter from the probe. You will now be holding the lid assembly. The lid assembly includes the filter lid, the knurled knob, the ceramic filter, two O-rings, and two filter gaskets. Inspect the filter element, O-rings, and gaskets, and replace if necessary. Inspect the filter chamber and clean with a damp cloth. While you have the probe open, it is also a good idea to shine a flashlight down the filter chamber and ensure that the probe tube is still extending out into the stack or duct. Reinstall the housing in reverse order and secure the filter lid. Be sure that the knurled screw and T-handle are only finger tight when reinstalled. Another common maintenance event is the dilution and adductor block rebuild. Again, before beginning maintenance, remove the system from service and shut off the dilution air to the probe. Open the neural nut screw on the side of the thermal conducting jaws or clamshells and set them aside. Loosen the two neural nut screws on the top of the clamp and swing the arm to the side. This will allow you to remove the dilution and bypass blocks. Inspect the O-rings. If they are damaged or flattened, replace them. Use the provided tool to remove the critical orifice, adductor, and bypass adductor from the blocks. Refer to chapter 17 in the user's manual for an exploded drawing of the equipment. We recommend rebuilding these blocks one at a time as the dilution and bypass adductor are not interchangeable. Do not clean these pieces mechanically. Clean the orifice and the adductor in an ultrasonic bath. Here is an abbreviated version of the rebuild sequence. Once the components have been cleaned and the O-rings replaced, the blocks can be reinstalled.
return the critical orifice and adductor with its nozzle seat and o-rings carefully back into the block. The knurled screws should only be finger tight as to not damage the block's o-rings. After the blocks have had a few minutes to heat up, check and make sure the knurled nut is tight. Reinstall the thermal conducting jaws, close the clamshell case, and you can now return the unit to normal. Run calibrations to verify your repair was successful.